I've modified this RC car to use some interesting aero devices to see how effective they are on a small scale. Now I'm very interested in the engineering of Formula One and how cars went from looking like this to looking more like this, with the advent of aerodynamics being used in motorsport to stick cars to the track. So what happens when you put huge wings on an RC car? How much do aerodynamics matter on this small scale? Can I build and refine some aero devices for my very fast RC car to help it travel faster around a corner? Can I even use ground effect to my advantage? Well, that's what I wanted to find out in this video. But first, what actually is downforce? Well, simply, it's the same principle that allows an aeroplane to rise up off the ground by creating lift from its wings, but used in reverse to apply force that presses the race car against the surface of the track. Essentially, air is deflected upwards, which pushes the car down onto the ground and allows it to grip the road with more traction. I decided to base this project around my seriously quick Armour Limitless RC car. Firstly, I I wanted to see how fast the car was around the corner, but without any bodywork. How much mechanical grip would we get from just the tyres and suspension? This meant I removed absolutely all of this stock bodywork, including the wings, splitter and diffuser. I removed all of this stuff so I just had a bare chassis. So how much would the car slide around? Would the car be really unstable without aerodynamics, or would it grip the road with ease? Right then, it's time to see how well the car works just using mechanical grip alone. The track is quite wet, <laughs> if you want to call it a track, is quite wet at the moment, but but it's going to be wet all week. This here is the track. We've got a, uh, a corner which is about 90 degrees and we're going to start all the way up there. I'm going to draw a line on the ground which will be the start point. There will be an end point over there um, and then we can just time the whole thing and see, uh, see how long it takes to get around the corner. Let's go for it. So the car, as predicted, was hard to control and a little squirrely. I carried out 10 separate runs and then calculated the average time, which was this. Oi. Okay, so we have a benchmark time to beat. So now I got to work building some big old wings to stick on the car to see if it would go around that same corner a bit faster. I chose some lightweight but strong materials for the new aerodynamic components. Foam board, although not all that strong, is a good lightweight material that I usually use to make my RC aircraft. It's easy to work with and can be hot glued together. I made the wings from sheet aluminium though, mainly to make sure that they were super strong and could take a knock or two. Let's face it, it was only a matter of time before testing the car to the limit resulted in a huge crash. But I shouldn't spoil what's going to happen in this video too much. Now I saw little point in doing this in half measures, so I went ahead and made the hugest wings with the biggest surface area I could, so I could get as much downforce as possible. If you didn't know, lift increases to the square of the wing area, which means that doubling the size of the wings doubles the amount of lift, or downforce. To finish it up, I stuck some stickers on the car, along with the names of my kind Patreon supporters who helped me to make my videos. If you want your name to appear on the next thing I make, then consider signing up to any of the tiers on my Patreon. Well, the winged version of the car is now completely done. I've finished off the aluminium wings. I've made sure that they're nice and strong with these big aluminium support ports back here. I had a bit of trouble with getting them uh, to stop flexing because uh, obviously that would be bad. You'd be losing a lot of the downforce effects if uh, it was just wasted in the, <laughs> the metal flexing. Also I've made a buffer for the front wing so this pushes down and as you can see with the suspension there. This thing looks absolutely ridiculous. I think one of the drawbacks of having the massive front wing on here, we'll see about this in a minute when we test it, but one of the drawbacks of having such a huge front wing is that the back, the rear wing will be spoilt somewhat with the air being deflected way too high up here. So we might end up having to change this later on, but uh, that's what the next test is for. The weather was nice and wet again, typical, but at least it was the same as the last test. So I got the car all powered up, then it was time to get lined up on the marked start box about 5 metres back from the time section start line and go for a blast around the corner. Now, just to keep it consistent. The car seemed fine, so I lined it up for another go. Hmm. 
The pins holding the body on had ripped through the wet foam board, so I needed to go and fix that back at my workshop. Those few runs before the crash resulted in a bit of a faster time, but maybe I could refine the aerodynamics a bit to go even faster on the next test. Okay, so what can we do to improve the version 1 aerodynamics? Well, the front wing could do with being a bit smaller to improve airflow to the rear wing. As you can see, there's a dead zone of low pressure over the rear wing right here, and this is surely making the rear end downforce less effective. By the way, I know that holding a fan up to a smoke machine is no substitute for a wind tunnel, but hopefully it gives you a good idea of what I'm talking about. Also, the drag of these huge surfaces could be a bit of an issue. Here you can see boundary layer separation caused by the extreme angle of the wing. This can be emphasised with an even greater angle of attack. The problem with boundary layer separation like this is that it creates a huge amount of drag behind the wing. Drag will cause the car to slow down in a straight line. For me, I'm all about the maximum downforce around one corner. And really, this drag shouldn't make a big enough difference for me not to use these huge wings. Despite this, I would still have to change that ridiculous front wing. So I swapped this out for a much slimmer one with about 50% of the surface area to make the rear wing more effective. Along with this, I decided to experiment with ground effects but what is ground effect and how can it help create more downforce? Well, as you know, the wings have been pushing the car down to the ground using high pressure air above them. With ground effect, the car is sucked to the ground using low pressure caused by a vacuum effect. Ground effect cars were developed in Formula 1 during the 1980s and created insane increases in cornering speeds. Special skirts from the floor of the car to the road surface trapped air beneath the car and the shape of the floor compressed accelerated and expanded the flow to create a low pressure suction effect which would keep the tyres of the car firmly pressed onto the track resulting in more grip. I couldn't really change the floor on my car too much so I decided to reinstall my original diffuser that came with the limitless car and glue some skirts along to it. I then set up the car so that it was at a high rake angle which means that the rear is actually lifted off the ground more than the front which would hopefully accelerate the air underneath the car with the skirts making sure that it didn't spill out from the sides. But how well would this work? Well I thought maybe I should take the car to a more open and smooth place to attempt some much higher speed cornering. Okay what we're going to do is lay out some cones, go around them at max speed and see how much the uh, the tyres scrub. This is a cone. Yep this, this is, is a cone. Hopefully from the onboard footage we'll get a good idea of the amount of understeer and uh, yeah whether these wings are working at all. At slow speeds clearly there wasn't enough air to go over the wings to stop the tyres scrubbing. I needed to be going much faster. <laughs> Time for some flat out runs with Mike filming the car head on to see how fast it would change direction. From an external perspective, it seemed that the car was sticking to the road really well. However, the onboard video told a different story. The front tyres were definitely scrubbing and the car was understeering. The wheels turning but the car still travelling straight on, or at least not turning as tightly as it should for that steering input. Looking closely, it actually seems that the car is pitching up as it gains speed. Is this because the powerful rear wing is now acting like an elevator on an aircraft? Maybe. Perhaps the previous huge front wing was actually a good thing for pressing the nose down. That is quite toasty that. Um, how did you think that was? Good cone work. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. I knocked most of them over <laughs> straight away. <laughs> so I reinstalled the larger front wing or shovel wing as it shall now be known and then it was back up to the same old corner for some final testing. Well we're up here again and it's very windy. Uh, time for the last test I suppose. You think by now I've got pretty good at going around this bit of road but apparently not. Oops. Okay, a few final runs at full send. That was quick. Well, that was inevitable. <laughs> Oh no! Oh dear. 
Where'd the front wing go? So how fast did the car go on those final runs? Well, I averaged this speed, which is definitely a lot faster than when the car was just a bare chassis. But does it actually prove much? Maybe not. Well, that's a bit broken now. <laughs> um, okay, so what have we actually learned from these tests? I recognise my experiments weren't that scientific with different days, different conditions, but I think there are some indicators here that downforce works on RC cars. Just look at some of the onboard video from the last test runs with the larger front wing, and you can see that the wing is flexing and pushing the suspension down. But I think, at least for this RC car, you need to be going extremely fast and have these huge wing surfaces to actually do anything. Now the one obvious thing that I completely neglected at the beginning of this project was to take into account the mass of the car. Inertia is a powerful force and with this six kilogram RC car, a really beefy thing, to change direction requires a lot of grip and a lot of uh, lot of force, go, you know, pushing the car into the ground to get that grip. So at this scale this car is too heavy but on more lightweight cars then yeah, downforce could be actually be a really helpful thing. Now with ground effect in high Inside, it was always going to be difficult to see if that actually worked um, but yes if you'd like to see me working on a similar you know follow-up project with a ground effect car then maybe you should yeah comment down below let me know um, suggest other things by the way make sure to click the like button if you've got to this point in the video and you've enjoyed it um, and yeah if you also you know if you have enjoyed it then make sure to check out some more of my videos there are loads on my channel that you've probably not seen and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy them if you've liked this one now if you're into building things like me then you you might be interested in leveling up your skills and knowledge with the sponsor of this week's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving. Because it takes more to learn something than just watching it. To really learn something, you have to actually do it. Brilliant has recently upped the interactivity on their platform to a new level, and they are continuing to improve their courses to add more interactivity to them. Here's a course on the subject of the center of mass, which if you want to build any sort of vehicle like the ones I do, knowing about how your aeroplane, drone, or car rotates around its center of mass is very important. The platform is so helpful as you can just learn on the go. It's not about memorizing or regurgitating facts and figures, it's about taking it at your own pace and just learning stuff that you're actually interested in. <laughs> Over the past year, Brilliant has built a whole new platform for courses that takes interactivity to the next level. Pre-algebra, mathematical fundamentals, and algorithm fundamentals were the first courses launched on this platform, and scientific thinking was just added last month. More courses will be releasing on the platform very soon, so stay tuned. If you'd like to join me and a community of over 8 million learners today, then make sure to click the link in the description, or go to brilliant.org forward slash project air. Thank you very much to Brilliant for supporting my channel and making content like this possible. Thank you to you for watching this video and yes, I suppose I will see you on the next one. See you later.